Good morning and welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna. It's great to see you. Anne, I saw you pop up right away. Good to see you again. I saw Anne. Was it yesterday? Was the day before yesterday? What fun we had in Maine. Quick but wild and fun. We'll talk about that a little bit in today's episode. Sorry for the odd time. It is another odd day for me. My heart is pumping like crazy. It, the, it, the busyness never stops. It must stop soon. It really, it's got to stop soon. It's all crazy. Um, but I realized um, I got back from Maine, had a great talk there. We'll talk about that a little bit because today is a mixed bag. Bag o' nuts. Rug hooker's delight. That's the flavor for today. Um, just me being silly. But yeah, it was a busy time, a fun time in Maine, gave a great talk and um, got back, uh, cranked out some orders because there was a big stampede on orders for the Fluffy Hook Along, which is coming up very soon. So I quickly did some dyeing and got those orders out. I'm getting the last ones out as soon as I close this episode and drive over to the post office. And I realized that this weekend is the weekend that I moved the Renaissance Fair for the kids, right? Because I had tickets to the fair and we moved it to later in the season because it rains every weekend. And it rains this weekend too. Uh, it's starting raining now, so you know it's the weekend, but um, super sad this year. But anyway, it's not supposed to rain on Sunday. So we're headed there, which means I am not around tonight. Tonight is also the night of the, I'll take some pictures for you, uh, annual. It's only one night a year if you're local. Um, what are they calling it? I thought they were calling it the Witch's Ball, but I think they're calling it the Witch's Night Out. It's at, it's the Providence Flea, which is the Providence Flea Market in Rhode Island. And it's the it's the night of the year that they have their Halloween themed uh, everything. Everything is Halloween. So we went kind of by mistake last year. Um, we went to the flea market because we were there that weekend having a weekend away. And God, we loved it. The kids loved it. I loved it. You know, I love um, I love Halloween stuff. That's where I got these guys. I got uh, this one and I think maybe this one. Definitely that one and a bunch of my other Halloween stuff that you often see at the um, Witch's Night Out. So that's tonight. That's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm not able to be with you tonight running a daytime episode. And let me say hellos and then let me catch up. Oh, thanks, April. I love this too. This is one of those um, Lula Row or something like that. They never fit well. They always have a really high neck and they're super, super long, but um, at least for me, very unflattering. I, I don't have the best body of my life at this moment, that's for sure. But um, I love this shirt too. Thanks for noticing. I'm trying to get all blinged out, you know. Linda, be great to see you in New Jersey. Mixed bag time. I realized I have some of everything for you today. So that's kind of fun too. More like a newscast, right, than a, than a show with a specific theme. Um, and TGIF, great to see you, my buddy. And April, great to see you. Robin in beautiful Wisconsin, look at all those leaves. It actually is at least here in Connecticut. We have had the worst looking autumn, I think, because of the miserable rain and all of that. Um, but suddenly in the last like 48 hours, it's looking quite beautiful. So far, this is the best fall foliage I've, I've had of the year. <laughs> But, you know, suddenly it's beautiful outside. And, uh, yeah, the, the latest autumn I have ever experienced. But uh, better late than never, right? Can't complain. Uh, Linda H. in Massachusetts, great to see you. Cats Gallery, greetings in Southern California. Your tire blew up and you're waiting for a tote. Oh, no. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Was it stressy? Like, boom. And But you got over to the side and you were safe and all that stuff. But, oh, that's so stressful. I'm so sorry. Do you think you ran over something? Oh man, um, I hope the tow truck comes really soon. And I hope the weather's good while you wait, I'm sorry. Uh, Linda B, oh, I know that is awful. We'll keep you company for sure. Deborah, great to see you. Good morning, great to see you. Oh, Jean, great to see you too. You're logging on from sunny Lower Sackville, Nova Scotia. Great to see you, Jean. Jean, Jean, dancing machine. Ryan, great to see you. Happy Friday from beautiful, sunny North Texas. Cup of tea and attempting your second ever hooked project. You still prefer punching. Yeah, I do too. But it's good, you know, it's so good to, um, it's so good to cross over now and then just for your hands. It's good to mix it up and, you know, and you become more proficient as you practice, of course. So 
um, yeah, it's good. It's good to work outside your comfort zone. All your work is so great anyway. I hope that things are going well with the Etsy store and that's getting set up because that always takes time, doesn't it? Um, oh, Maggie, good to see you. You you logged on. Now, I feel like you have a lot. I mean, we've been talking outside of this, but I'm very happy that you logged on. Um, so fun. It is a rainy day here, too, as well as in Ohio. And hold on, just catching up as I'm catching you. Um, Hexa Rob from Germany. Great to see you. Welcome. Welcome in. My brother-in-law is German. I spend a lot of time with him, but he has an Irish accent because he learned to speak English in Ireland. It's very strange. It's a lot of fun. He's a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks, Jean. Yeah, it's a different time for me today. Today's a little bit skewered. I'll tell you, this whole month of October is very, very tricky. As soon as I hit November and into December, I, I will be back into a schedule where I'm comfortable too and I have a schedule. Um, while I love flying by the seat of my pants and, and traveling and having a lot of in-person dates, I love all that, but I also love uh, knowing what my schedule will be tomorrow and not having a lot of flux. And lately it's been incredibly busy, which is great, but I'm looking forward to watching some Hallmark movies and anchoring my rear end onto the couch and working on some actual hooking. I started a little bit of hooking. I got about 20 minutes in last night before it was time to bring the kids up. I'll show you what I was working on in a second. Co oh my gosh, Colleen, I have to pay you. Great to see you, my love, from cloudy Maryland. Um, I asked Colleen to make me, if you remember from our uh, Friday episode, our Friday episode was like three hours, wasn't it? This past Friday, that was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Uh, it was a fun episode though, our gallery night. Go ahead and start sending me your next gallery pictures because we can assimilate them into this program that I use, the Streamlabs. It takes a lot of time to get all of the slides in. So feel free anytime during the month, you don't have to wait for the shout out. Just send them to my email at ribboncandyhooking at gmail.com and Shannon and um, Jane and I will start putting them into the slideshow and getting that whole thing happening. But Colleen showed this uh, this Halloween figure with the pumpkin face and I said, oh my God, I love it. I've got to have it. Is it for sale? And then I wrote afterward and she ended up making me one. So Colleen, I'm so sorry. I forgot about the Venmo thing. I'll do that right after the show. Uh, it's just been, I, I can't get my feet under me right now. That's all. Um, I'm Oh, Deborah says I'm conducting a workshop tomorrow for a few senior citizens at someone's request uh, that came to my demo last month. That is fan fantastic that is fantastic um gosh I, that made me think i wanted to show you something and i don't have it handy here um along those lines just as an fyi uh and then i'll then i'll you know let me conclude my hellos and then i'm going to come back to that thought uh, i wish i could dance these days he's sporting a nice blue cane oh i bet i'm sure it's temporary i'm sure it's temporary gene <laughs> There's a lot of tap dancing with the cane, though, isn't there, right? I remember it's a little old soft shoe stuff. Uh, Maggie, you did good getting on. That's great. Rita, I just sent your package out today. Great to see you. Thank you. Thank you to everybody who's been placing orders. I really appreciate it. And, of course, I appreciate the Patreon support always. I sent out a Patreon notice with a couple of um, images that I'm now working on. I'll show you in a minute. And um, I'll get another one out before the end of the month. So huge thank you to everybody who supports me and supports the brand um, always, right? Because I'm I try to keep things at reasonable prices, and I'm always skin skin of the teeth in it. Um, but a lot of volume, which is nice. Dave, great to see you. Wet and cool in Toronto. So many projects on the go. That's the weather for it, isn't it? Judy, great to see you. I was needing uh, needing it on C-SPAN. I'm late. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Just starting up. So uh, Deborah just said that you're doing like a presentation to some senior citizens. I just wanted to put the word out there because I know a lot of you are getting involved with outreach, which is so great for us, right, in the rug world. Any kind of teaching that you're doing at your local senior centers, libraries, anywhere, historical societies. If you're ever in situations where you are wanting to supply kits or practice stuff for people, you can always contact me and I'll wholesale you out some remarkably inexpensive stuff. If you've got quantity 10 or more, I will take a break from what I'm doing and just poop those out really fast. Sorry, that was gross. But you know, that's something I can do. But if you just wanna get going and work on something, this gap is driving me crazy, hang on. I'm gonna put her right here. 
She's too cute. She's too cute to not be seen. Oh, OCD is a rough thing, I'll tell you. If you want to put something together that's very fast and easy, I would suggest that you go for um, a crochet hook for people, like number 3.5, 3.75, that kind of thing. Between a three and a four, I think, is ideal. Um, in burlap uh, from, from Joann's or Michael's, right, a craft store, um, it, it'll, it's fine. It's fine to get people started, you know. But that a crochet hook around be, between three and four, go 3.5, smack in the middle, works really well. In fact, the crochet hook, and this is what I wanted to show you, that I brought to the class I did last weekend in Madison, that was, I think, a 3.5, and it had it had the beautiful kind of polymer clay floral uh, handle on it, very inexpensive, worked absolutely beautiful, because I also brought, uh, and I'm not trash talking here or making a, a, a marked comparison, but I also brought proper rug hooks, and out of the 10 people there, nine of them preferred to stick with the crochet hook. So it's always a preference thing, how the thing feels in your hand. It was also very pretty because it had kind of autumn colored flowers on it. But those kinds of things can be found on Amazon or you can, if you need something like that in quantity because you're doing some kind of outreach, let me know and I will show you, you know, things change even on Amazon and sometimes you can't find the same hook or backing or something twice and you're like, oh great, now it's going to cost me a fortune, right? You can always email me and I'll tell you what the last thing that worked for me was because I do this constantly and I can say, listen, those hooks are out of stock. Those are great, but these are also just as great or even better, good price point, right? So this is something that you could use for teaching or uh, whatever. You don't have to feel like when you're teaching people for the first time, you don't have to give them a bent nail, right? Like old timey, but you don't have to give them a Joan Moshimer hook either, right? And those are those should uh, wholesale for about $10 each, um, 12 if you're not getting a ton. But, you know, there are other choices, and that's one of the choices that I choose a lot. Hang on, I feel like, um, okay. Um, and that works out really well. So nerding out, that's okay. <laughs> Let me take a quick sip. I'm going to come back to you. I can't get enough coffee inside my body today. So thinking of the things I need to tell you, my brain just went blank. So let's get going with our mixed bag. I think there's some slides in there that are going to help you or help me stay on track. I'm going to be jumping around between subjects today because we still have lots of rugs to look at from the Deerfield show. Believe it or not, we have rugs we haven't looked at from Wisconsin when I took my trip there. I haven't deleted those. They're called scenes in the, the dashboard that I look at. They're called scenes. And I keep those scenes in place because I know that there's still some rugs in there that we didn't get to and they're beautiful and I don't and, and they're always there for us for days that we do our mixed bag or our mixed nuts, right? Rug hookers variety. And um, there's a lot of that today. I'm also, I've also got a segment built into today where we look at sweaters because I've been doing a lot of shopping for sweaters lately, partly because of the pattern uh, sweater weather I have that's done quite well with the witch walking through the woods. But I've been talking a lot about hooking with sweaters and it, it's a big thing for me. And I've been talking a lot about the way that finding sweaters to cut up, whether they're wool or not, it's getting scarcer and scarcer because the quality of clothes is going down and people are not buying clothes as often that um, would last long enough to donate them somewhere you know for another person to use so since that's the case and everything is kind of throwaway, right um, we're seeing less and less inventory at thrift stores and all that stuff and and definitely sweaters too with the weather changing not as many people getting sweaters, not as many people making sweaters, selling sweaters. So there's a whole segment on that today. Let me come to the beginning and let's catch up a little bit. I used to catch up with personal stuff first. So I'm going to catch up. Um, I'm going to catch you up on last week because I didn't run a show. What day was it? I think it was Wednesday, maybe. One of the days I took Teddy to that adventure park and I was the chaperone. And I just wanted to let you know, because I got some emails and people saying, how did you do? Is he doing okay? Because he's new. This is his now third week at his new school. He is an autistic child in a general education program. It's not easy. And I wanted to chaperone on this trip because um, I just wanted to get my face in there to, to sniff around and check things out. Because he said, oh, you know, I've been, every time they choose people for teams, I'm the last one, even after all the girls. And... Um, 
And I thought, let me just get my face in there. If there's any rotten kids in there, I'll let them know, right? I'll let the I'll let them know directly because that's the way that Mama rolls. So we went to this adventure place last week, and that was one of the reasons I was moving the shows around a little bit last week. It was with his school, and sure enough, we got there, and there was a sit down. He always make this is his new face for uh, the camera. So if you're friends with me on Facebook, this is the only face you get for probably about 18 months, and then we get a different face. So we'll look forward to the next one. Maybe it will be better. Thanks, Rita. So, he, you know, they ran a little safety video, and he was sitting by himself, and that broke my heart. And at this moment, I said, come on, Teddy, let's get in a picture. And, um, and this was before he had his harness on him to get up in the trees and do some zip lining and climbing. And this is my face when I am half crying, and I'm trying to take a picture and look normal. I know that that's my face, right, because I do this all the time. And I was thinking, this is not going to be okay. This is never going to be okay. This is going to be another one of these things that we do that is a disaster that I should not have done or should not ha I should have just not sent him, where he goes up there with all of these kids who he's not friends with already, and he's not going to want to zip line because he's never zip lined before. He's not going to want to climb across stuff because he's never done that in his life. I take Jocelyn to these places, and me and him sit and watch and have a pizza right he's never done this and I thought we're gonna and he's gonna end up going up there into the trees being on a platform with a bunch of these new kids in his class behind him and he's not going to be able to go forward and do the zip line and he is going to be mortified and we are going to end up having to walk him in reverse right with the employees back down the ladder the wrong way and slink off and get into our car and disappear and I that's why I was like half crying because I thought, why did I do this to him? Why did I do this to him? Setting him up for failure. Oops, wrong slide. And then, guess what? He totally did it. He he completely did it. He hesitated for about 10 seconds. There was a big line of kids behind him. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. And that's our friend Kevin, who's uh, his friend Gus is. Gus is in our neighborhood, and he's one of the buddies, in, Teddy's only buddy in his class. And that's, that's Gus's dad, Kevin, who talked Teddy into doing the zip line. And he did it, and he did great. And I thought I had one more picture, and apparently I don't. I put the wrong one in. But he did great. He did just fine. And I was so proud of him. He ended up staying the whole day, and um, he was still by himself in the trees. Made me think of that Carly Simon song, something like, wasn't she do a song like Boys in Trees or something like that? Because every time I looked up, it was like the forest canopy and you know there's all and it was kind of it wasn't a bright day right because it's like this season and I looked up and I just saw it was like noiseless boys mostly boys in trees and and nobody making noise because everybody is concentrating right no one was like shouting to each other everyone was probably scared and concentrating and it made me think about that song because I thought how funny when you look up sometimes you see a bird or a squirrel and they freeze it, you know because they know that you can see them and then they move again. But in this case, I looked up and I just saw a bunch of boys in the trees. And it was so strange. It was so strange. But it was it made me happy too, Anne. Thank you all. It was it was really the best thing that could have happened. And um, yeah, and a couple of like boys in the class said to him, good job, Ted. Good job, man. And I thought, oh, don't cry. I'm going to spoil everything if I start crying. But he did really well, and he wants to do it again. So we're going to do it again immediately before he loses the nerve, because I know how that goes, too. Good old Ted. He's got a lot working against him, but, man, he tries. He tries so hard. So uh, that was one of the days of this past week, and then I got going. You saw the post on all of these pantyhose. I'm going nuts with pantyhose right now. I brought a ton of them to the class for hooking the sugar skull pumpkins. There's a, there is a rug in there, Rita. I'll probably do a rug of him zip lining, maybe even with his face. That's his new face and his new wave. He used to, you know, wave like this, like normal, and now this is his wave. Like, and he does it out the car window. And I just thought, but what? You know, he keeps reinventing himself. He's a child. Why not? Right? It's just funny. He is. He he's amazing. I'm just floundering around, doing my best, and hoping not to make really fatal uh, errors. <laughs> but he's fantastic and incredibly uh, resilient. Right. So I've been working on these guys like you can't imagine, and I posted a video to say I still have a few more. I had to dye some more because the demand was crazy. So I had to dye a few more, and these are in the trick-or-treat bags waiting for you if you want them. They're $22 for five ounces, which is an extraordinary amount for pantyhose. More on that in a minute. 
Oh, and good question. Did Jay get the video up uh, from the York talk? So not yet. So let's talk about that for a second. Um, and, and he got it to me. So on, what was it? Wednesday, I uh, did a talk in Maine, right? And we went up the night before Jay came with me. He did some antiquing. I did my talking. He ended up staying at the talk with me because um, we were allowed to film it. Grace, thank you, Grace Collette. So we were allowed to film it. This is a non athic guild. This is the Seacoast Guild. So uh, we went up there because it was at 10 in the morning and it's about four hours from me uh, without traffic. So I didn't, you know, I worked all day and then shot up there and it was um, a push. But we got up there and we got to the place in the morning that was like a cute little church and the Seacoast Guild was there and I got to meet a bunch of lovely people, some of whom I've met before, some who traveled a little ways and came, um, which was nice because you're not in the guild, but now you met some of the buddies in there and maybe you get together in Wells for that event. So we were able to shoot a video. So Jay ended up staying because we shot a video that was about an hour and a half and it overloaded my phone. So halfway through the video, he switched to his phone. And now the problem is fusing the two videos. So it took literally hours to move the video onto Google Drive and then into the program I need it to be in. But now I need to edit it a little bit. So that's down to me. I have the video. Um, it's been ready since last night and I'll have to do it over the weekend. I'll probably do it maybe tonight um, after the event with the kids. And then when I'm at the hotel, I'll probably do it tonight, but I'll get that up. I'm going to edit out the very end because the presentation is about an hour and it's about the design like book, which should be coming out around January Royal cooking magazine. And I cover, I think maybe six artists in it and show for the first time, some of the design like rugs that people have done for the book. Right? So, um, that's the nature of the talk and it, I think it was a very successful talk. I got a lot of good feedback after it. I got a lot of hugs. It was a it was a wonderful time and I felt like looking at people's faces that people were interested and excited and inspired and that's the point. So it was a great event um, but at the end of the event I showed a lot of other rugs that are going to be in the Design Like series book series. Um, and I'm going to cut that out. Uh, I'm just going to keep the presentation in because I want to save some stuff for later. So I will, I will post hopefully by bedtime tonight, a quite long video where the audio is excellent. And one of the things I'm doing is, and one of the things that's taking time is now that the video is fused, I'm working off a PowerPoint presentation and saying, for example, um, Paul Clay, like he, this is this era of his life. This is when he works on his color theory. This is the stuff that comes up after he takes this trip to Tunisia and I'm showing stuff in the slideshow, but it's very hard to see in the video. So I'm actually merging the, um, PowerPoint presentation. I have slide by slide sequentially and, um, and when it comes up in the actual video and the timing of the video. So that's something that's taking a little time, but it's so worth it because in watching this video, um, you will be able to look at the same slides that people were looking at. So it's going to be an excellent presentation to see, even if you weren't there. So that is a to be continued. It's way more walk, uh, way, way more work than I thought it would be, but that's okay. Um, thanks. Anne. I feel like it was really quite good. I feel it was exciting. Shirley, great to see you. Good afternoon. Good to see you. So that was a lot of fun and, and be looking for that tonight. I was hoping to get that up the same night, but, um, it didn't occur to me that with having it split between two phones and the files being enormous, that that was going to be a problem. I also couldn't move his file onto my phone because my, because they were both such large files, I couldn't accommodate something that size. You know how technology is just so, it's so crappy. Um, but that is forthcoming for sure. So hopefully you'll have that tonight. That is my plan. This has uh, been a very popular kit in the last few days. Um, while I was in Maine that day, there were orders for six more. So these are all going out today. As of today, I will be up to date with the fluffy hook along kits. It is just the pumpkin part with the black, the aubergine, and about eight different colors of red, two different colors, the lemon and the lime colors for the eyes. Um, so this is coming in black. Uh, this is coming to you. The background is not included, right? The hook along, I'm hooking the pumpkin. So I, I won't be able to be there for like 24 hours, but I'll probably be live for three or four hours on mischief night. Uh, October 30th. And if you have this kit, and if you don't have this kit, you can hook along with me, but I will be hooking the pumpkin part of this fluffy pumpkin. And that hook along again is October 30th. That is on the ribbon candy hooking website. You can certainly order it and I will get it out to you in the Monday mail. 
Um, and it might come in time. Oh, that was the other one I wanted to show you. There's Teddy going across. I mean, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I wouldn't do, he's got a harness on, but I, that wouldn't be for me, right? I wouldn't have to change my pants. That would definitely not be for me, but it's for a lot of people. Uh, he is so funny. He is so funny. Oh, and in Maine, I just wanted to share this. It was so much, you know, it, it was such a treat. I was so happy that Grace Collette asked me to come up and talk to that guild because she's such an iconic person. You know, she's such a, I mean, she's just, she's legendary, right? Rita, I forget what you said the other day, Rita, but you had a word for it. She's just, um, it, it's, in, she's incredible. Um, and she's always been like a big advocate of me. Like she had me during COVID do a talk for their guild that was over Zoom. And then I saw her at the Deerfield show, the country fair, and she asked me to come do this speaking date. Um, she's always been a great advocate, which I really appreciate because, you know, I am a new person to GOAT. Um, oh, 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 it's a, um, uh, it's an anagram. Um, greatest of all time. Yep. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you know, she, she's always been very positive. And when you're a new person to the game, it's like you're some kind of weird uh, whippersnapper or interloper and she's never treated me like that she's always treated me it, you know pushed me forward into the center and I really appreciate that so it was great to be able to meet um, this guild the seacoast group because um, a lot of them I don't know and don't know me and now we're friends so that's great you know uh, Dawn great to see you I know me too my man oh my little man hey Cindy thank you my Lu Lulu Ro. I have a lot of this uh, Halloween stuff, right? And I, I got it because I have kids, but I, to be honest, I really like it and I'm going to keep wearing it even after the kids are older. They'll probably be telling me to stop and I won't be able to stop. So um, so the trip to Maine was great and it actually uh, led to two other speaking engagements, hopefully one at the Tin Peddlers in Maine, further up north, and uh, one next year at the uh, North American Rug Cooking Museum in, I think, Nova Scotia. So that'll be really fun. Kirsten, great to see you. So, um, yeah, so that like one turned into three and that's the way the number should be when you're in business. But it was such a pleasure to go to Maine. And, you know, I usually go to Maine uh, in the summer because it's vacation land, right? That's what the license plates say anyway. But I'm telling you, it was so nice walking around. We, we were walking around Ogunquit in the evening. And this is one of my favorite towns. This is the town where my grandparents always used to vacation for like decades and they had all of these cute vignettes going on on the street with skeletons. You know, each town does different kinds of things, but Ogonquit was really over the top. And just, just walking through the downtown area a little bit late, you know, after the stores had closed, um, I could hear music playing. There was a band up in one of the windows playing tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree. And it, it, there was just such atmosphere, you know. And I found some vignettes like this that I thought were funny, the skeletons with their lobster bibs eating lobster. And then I had to take a picture, for those of you that, that love Maine also, of what the skeletons are eating. Moxie is the drink of Maine, right? That's like the official drink of Maine. It's their soda. And it's very, very, very different. It's, it's more like, um, it's not like Dr. Pepper, but it's more like one of those kind of um, sarsaparilla, you know, one of those like older kind of root, not root beer, because it's, it's not a strong cola taste. It, it's a very odd drink. It's excellent. Um, and then those look like little, uh, what's the brown thing, do you think? Do you think that's like a little, what do they call those? Uh, it begins with an M, doesn't it? The pastry things. Oh, maybe they're whoopie pies. Oh, I bet they're whoopie pies. I think they must be, right? Like the 1950s. And then the corn on the cob, the lobster bake with the lobster. I just thought, this is too funny. Are you on the left or the right in those chairs, you jerk? <laughs> I'm not that thin, I'll tell you. I'm going for it, but not there yet. This was right across the street from it. It was so cute. <laughs> macaroon, that's it, Colleen. I think it was a whoopie pie, but thank you. It's definitely a macaroon. It used to be, I, I remember macaroons being something different. Am I losing my mind? I remember my grandmother making macaroons and they were more like little pies, like almost like a coconut kind of a texture to them. Am I thinking of something crazy? Because I remember she always used to say she was going to make the macaroons. And then all of a sudden, you know, I'm seeing macaroons and pastry shop windows that are pastel colors. And they're like little sandwiches. And I'm like, that's not a macaroon. Or maybe the, maybe the word changed or maybe I'm losing my mind. But this was really cute, too. And, you know, I didn't no notice. Yeah, it must be a whoopie pie, right? Because I think that's a state of Maine thing. But, um, yeah, Rita, you remember that, right? I, I distinctly remember that. 
this is funny because in the dark, do you see on the far right, I don't know how I didn't see this at the time, there's a giant spider. Do you see that? I walked right next to that thing and I didn't see it. Um, so funny. Yeah, I missed that. That would have jumped if I had seen that. Colleen says, yes, they use rice flour. So yeah, it is an interesting texture. So there was, there was such a thing as a macaroon. So why did they start making a different thing called a macaroon that looks completely different? And is it is different, right? Because the old macaroons were like little squares, like little hermit squares or something. And these are like little pot, like pastry pies. They look like little petty fours, but they're little sandwiches, you know? I don't get it. I don't get it. It's like monk's cloth and monk's cloth. Why do they have to be two and why does one of them have to be wrong? I don't know. Jean says, I remember too. And in Canada, we had chocolate candy with coconut called a mac macaroon. That sounds amazing. I wonder, I'm trying to think. See, I'm trying to think about my limited French macaroon is macaroon as far as i know i'm trying to think does it is it like a shapeshifter word where it could mean different things that it could produce all these different recipes but i don't think so the others are from france well you know that's funny because the first time i saw the colored macaroons was like outside paris when i was doing all the chateaus on the loire and in one of the i think it was in the town called uh, chanty which is we say chantilly like chantilly lace and they were like colorful and i thought god what are those um, and they were macaroons and I thought, no, those aren't macaroons, but they, and I thought, oh, it must be a French thing. They're calling them macaroons. Now I see them everywhere. I mean, they're even at Starbucks, right? They're like $17 each. Just kidding. Uh, Robin says there are French macaroons and then there are coconut macaroons. Okay. Interesting. Oh, Courtney, the colored uh, cookies are French macaroons. Okay. So there is a distinction. You all know this. I've just been getting confused and tripped up every time I see them. I had ones with half cherry on top. Oh, that sounds nice. Yeah, those are, Rita, the old-fashioned ones, they did have like a half cherry on top. That's the way my grandmother made them. Love the coconut macaroons. All right, so we all, so I'm not going crazy. We all remember that there was such a thing as macaroons. Um, and this is an interesting side conversation because I'm also going to inject here just a little bit of a, of a teaser thing and say, um, you know, I have been going back and forth a lot with Judy Taylor. We're working together on putting out a publication that will be a regular publication. And certainly, and we talk, we've been talking about it a lot lately, and it is forthcoming. And it's something that I'm going to bring you in on as soon as we get the foundation done. It's going to be a real group project publication, just like we've always talked about, where there will be different features in every issue. It'll probably start as a quarterly thing. Um, until we can get some traction going and, um, you know, Judy's going to do a couple articles. I'm going to do a couple articles and then I'm going to reach out to you for articles. It's going to be very seasonal. We're going to be looking to do X amount of free patterns in every issue. Um, but I'm also going to want to do things like a, a rug hooker's crossword, word search, recipe page, question page, all of this old fashioned stuff that I never see and I can't get enough of. So all of that is going to be present. Um, so you just reminded me of that, that there is a lot of crossover with things that we all like, right? And uh, I'm not going to tell you the name of the magazine yet because I think we have decided. I'll tell you more about it. But it's all coming together. So you be thinking, too, about features that you would like to see in all of the issues or maybe articles that you could write. Maybe you could kick in an article here or there. Maybe you have the idea for something that we could use and would love to publish. It's not gonna work like other trade magazines. It's gonna be a much friendlier magazine with shout outs in every issue um, for a specific theme, right? And you're gonna to have tons of time to work on the theme and it's, it's gonna be a good mixture of things, much more uh, if it were a TV show, it would be like an old variety show as opposed to like a contemporary talk show, that kind of thing with lots of bits and pieces in it. So be thinking, you know, as Judy and I are working on laying down the foundation for this and getting it started, um, be thinking about if you would like to contribute something like a story or whatever. You know, I'm very, very flexible and Judy is too. And if there's things that you would like to share or tips or techniques or a rug that you've done and there's a story around it, uh, um, anything like that. Be thinking about stuff like that because we're going to start giving the shout out for content and I want to use, we will be kicking in content on a regular basis and be doing the sort of heavy lifting with that, but we're going to be looking for lots of content from you out there um, and whatever you're thinking, oh, I could put this in, but uh, maybe it's not, maybe it's not interesting to other people. Give it a shot. Give it a shot, right? I will let you know and I'll look through everything that I'm sent. So that's coming soon. That's coming soon. Recipes included. 
And Linda says, in here in Jersey, my English mom's favorite mac macaroon uh, was basically almond paste with, oh my God, with pine nuts on top. Go figure. That sounds amazing too. Macarons versus macaroons. I see. There is a distinction. I never noticed that, but now, but that's, that makes sense. Interesting. Jersey style. Gosh. All right. Well, we definitely got to the bottom of that. We definitely, and, and you know what? Um, I'm hungry and all I've got is a stupid coffee. Mm. Grace gave me some incredible food at the talk the other day. It was absolutely nutty. You made it to the tire place. Congratulations. I'm glad you're set. That is so awful. I hate it when that happens. I hate it when car stuff happens. All right, let's keep going. So what else have we got? And there you are. No warning. No warning. Just there you are. And I forgot to take a picture of you with Frida Kaulo. No, Saulo. Frida Saulo. I forgot. But I did get this great picture of Anne. And she is holding her purse, which is the pattern Tis Autumn. And this is a free pattern. It came out, I think, last year on Ribbon Candy Hooking. It's there for you. You can download it and use it. This is just a great use of it, Anne, having a purse like this that, she, I mean, it's so expertly done, the entire purse, but it's so pretty for autumn. Uh, and I loved seeing everybody making their Tis Autumn. La-di-da, la-di-da. That's a great uh, Nat King Cole song, Tis Autumn. I love seeing everybody making their Tis Autumn uh, pieces. And this is the only one I saw turned into a bag. It's absolutely gorgeous. The little uh, squirrel is holding his little acorn dot at the bottom. I just love that piece. Beautiful job. Oh, and this is Marilyn. So this was at the talk in Maine. And Marilyn was just a, a lot of fun. She was like uh, what what I, I would call a hot ticket. Uh, she was telling me about how at their country fair, and I'm for, I forget what town it was in, but it was Maine. She said they had these birch logs out and they were hanging all of these leaves that they had made on them. And hers, she added a ton of bling, she said, because, and you can probably tell by this photo, she is a she is a little fireball and she loves bling. So she added a lot of bling to her, um, <laughs> that's not true, Anne, <laughs> to her leaves. And she was so proud of them. So these were hanging up um, at the, their local country fair, along with a bunch of other leaves that were done by the guild. And just, you know, as, a, as an exhibit and a demonstration and to show people how much fun, how many different kinds of things you can do. I didn't realize there were little leather straps on that. How nice is that for hanging? That's really pretty. These would go so nice across a garland or something like that too. But she had these leaves out and I just thought, how cute. So I, I, I asked her if I could take that picture of her and she's just a doll. She's just a real doll. Oh, and then right after we stopped at the York Galleries, uh, which is right on that same road, Route 1. Um, I guess it's in York. I thought it was more, I thought it was more in Kittery, but I think it's in York. Um, four floors, very old building, very fine high-end stuff. And this one was here last time I went a couple years ago and I so wanted to get it. I just didn't have the money. I, it was like 600. I just couldn't, you know, I just couldn't with all the stuff with the kids right now in the middle of the fall season, Christmas coming and all that. But I just, I just love this piece and I wanted to photograph it again to show you you know, I was a little bit nervous looking at it because um, I, I don't think it's a particularly old piece. Um, I think it's probably, I would, my best guess would be 1960s. I could be well wrong, but I think it is a contemporary-ish piece. And it's just done in the old-fashioned thrift style, which makes it, makes it really hard to date. It's mounted, so I couldn't look at the back of it either. But it looks like it's scissor cut for the most part and um, a lot of use of patterned wool in the background. Really love this piece. I hope next time I go, it's there, and I do have the extra money to buy it. Um, but I was looking at it, and it made me a little bit nervous because there was a lot of material at the surface of it, like on the pile, that was loose and broken off. And I thought, are there moths in it, right? Because there's a few little specks that I kind of dusted off of it that I was like, ooh, that's not attached. And I thought, ah, that, does, that doesn't sound good, does it? So I was like, oh man, just get it and bring it home. Uh, you know, train the bank account, bring it home and, um, and put it in a bag in a freezer for uh, a good long while and just see, try to save it. But yeah, I couldn't justify it. And that was making me very, very nervous. But again, next time I go, if it's there, I might check it out again and look at it again, maybe make, make an offer. It's definitely worth it. It's just, it's been there forever at the same price. And um, yeah. 
I really loved it though. I loved it, wanted to share it. Okay, so this is what I'm working on this weekend. Um, the tarot class is coming up, designing like the tarot deck and it also includes traditional playing cards, historic playing cards. My plan is to go down, remember I said I wanted to go down to uh, New Haven to the Beinecke Museum on, you know, before the tarot card class, which uh, is I think Wednesday and Sunday. You have to check the ribbon candy hooking schedule. But you can always sign up for that even the same day of the class, designing like the tarot card and the traditional playing card. But the Beinecke Library at Yale has um, a very, very, very rare handful of cards. Um, I think they're all major arcana cards from um, the 1400s. That's crazy. And they all feature women because they're believed to have been, they're all hand painted. They're believed to have been painted for a woman, commissioned you know, for a woman to use. So maybe in her likeness. So my plan is to go down there on Monday. I'm not able to do a video there. So I'll probably do a video um, outside and then put together a video with um, audio and then show you stills that I take on the inside. So my plan is to do that on Monday and I'm very excited about that because these are insanely beautiful cards and I really want a good look at them close up. So that's coming up too. Make sure you're signed up for the tarot class. It's not about mysticism, it's about design. Um, this is my card, The High Priestess. It has little polka dots in the background. This one went out to my Patreon friends uh, the day that I made it. Uh, that is one of the two, I think, that went out. I really love this one, and I've got this one ready to hook over the weekend. And um, these are a couple others that I'm working on. The one on the left, anything with cups represents relationships. Um, and maybe you've caught a whiff of it, but a lot of my relationships are very odd, difficult, strained. Um, I've always had um, a, core, a core group of great friends and 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 just, um, yeah, when I have trouble with relationships, it's odd, but it does, it does happen. No more detail, no more detail needed, but I'm sure it happens to all of us, uh, particularly friendships and stuff sometimes throw me for a loop, right? How, how wacky uh, they turn out to be. So I've had a lot of stuff with uh, relationships in the last, yeah, year. And um, that's been a bit tricky and tough. So this is my card for the Eight of Cups. It features eight cups. And the cat, Jocelyn, drew, right? She just drew it. And I thought, that is my character for, for the Cups card. So I've got cups and kettles and vessels of all kinds spilling all over the place. And my plan for this one, for, for all of the tarot cards I'm designing, my plan is to hook them myself. I, I think I'm probably going to go on a winter bender with this and just do a lot of very sort of personal memoir writing through the design of tarot cards right just using the meaning of each card uh, for example the you know the cups is about relationships and the swords is about conflict so each one has a different subject and when i think about how they apply to my own life it, it helps me make sense of things that i struggle with so i can see myself going on a tarot bender <laughs> easily so my plan for all of these is to hook them with pantyhose all different color palettes but i am loving the grenfell style of hooking with pantyhose. So um, my plan is to hook the Eight of Cups um, mostly in white, that whole, the big part of the background in white, and then to hand paint it, like the loops, after I've pulled them up in white. So that's something I'll do on video and show you. The Page of Swords I was working on, this, I did all of these in the same sitting, but it features the wise old owl holding the sword, he is the Page of Swords, and some more mushrooms that Jocelyn drew. And then I have in it the dog, which represents my daughter Jocelyn, she's her favorite animal, and the rat, which represents Teddy, not because he is a rat, but because um, he's been, he, he's very interested in rats and he's been drawing his own sort of cartoon series that uh, features this uh, rat with rabies, right, whatever. So we've been talking about rats constantly and writing about rats constantly. So I have the rat riding on the dog's back and you see that their tails are crossed like in battle. They're very unhappy with each other. This is just the mood of, of life right now in the house. It's like they are constantly embroiled in the most ridiculous battles over nothing. Uh, so I thought, let's, let's use this image for the page of swords. Um, but it's very easy with these tarot card images to personalize them to your own life and what's happening in your life. And I, I find it very cathartic to uh, think about the meaning of each of them and, um, and, and drawing parallels and 
drawing drawings. I find it very, very useful and helpful. And this is in part what the tarot card class will be about because it's loaded with games and exercises to get you going on your own drawings. They don't have to be mystical. Not all mine are mystical, right? The cat with the cups and uh, the dog and the, and the rat, they don't have to be mystical. These are a little bit more. The magician is the one I'm working on right now. And it's like a female witch with her back, obviously to us, with swirling classic uh, clouds, right? Classic tarot clouds. And then all of these trappings of uh, sort of witchcraft and magic. Keys, mushrooms, um, uh, tea leaves, uh, crystals, glowing candle. So I'm hooking that one right now and I'll show you. I just started it just for a few minutes last night before I couldn't anymore. For Wheel of Fortune, I wanted to do something that had a partly circular motif and I have another idea for it. So I'm gonna do a couple of designs for Wheel of Fortune. But I've got the Luna Moth in here and Jocelyn's mushrooms, right? These are exactly the way she drew them and I've got like the moon and its phases coming down. I might drop the mushroom and add a few more moons just so I have more of an arc to it. But we'll see how it goes. Those are the projects that I'm bringing with me this weekend. And this is last night I started working on the Magician. And I've got, this is sideways, but I'm hooking it all with pantyhose. And these are pantyhose that I've dyed. Um, and you see, this is how they hook. I haven't clipped anything. I was working mostly in the dark, but some of them big fat. I'm cutting with my scissors as I go. I'll do a video over the weekend showing you how I'm cutting my pantyhose and hooking with them. But man, I love this more than anything, I have to say. I absolutely love hooking with pantyhose. I just, I cut them like calamari crossways and I, I'll do the video, but, and then I just put a clip in them and then I just go. And some of them are wider and fuller and uh, the tops of them, you know, the control tops are more opaque and the leg is more transparent, and you can see both effects look fantastic. And it's just so cushy-mushy hooking with pantyhose. It really is my my favorite thing. So I've been enjoying this immensely, and more on that. Now, do you remember this image? This, I had to have Linda Hadlock send this to me because, let me pull her up here um, on Messenger, because remember, <coughs> when we were doing the show on the pumpkins, hang on, let me have a little, little pumpkin spice. When we were doing the show on the pumpkins, this beautiful image came up and I had not, I had failed to get a full uh, picture of it. So I wrote and I said, I can't believe it because this is like one of the best ones, certainly in, in the pumpkin show. And, um, and I had gotten the edge of it in like four different shots, but not the entire thing. So I thought classic, classic mama. But um, Linda sent me this great image. She said Mary hooked it, but she didn't say Mary's last name. Um, so she sent me this image. I just wanted to show it to you close up. This is, this is the pumpkin challenge where you were to hook a pumpkin that was not an orange pumpkin. And Mary did the Cinderella's coach and it's just stellar. I'll stretch it open in a minute because I want to show you that the sky is felt. The moon and the clouds are wispy. They are felted, felt needle, right? Stabby felt needle. And the wheels, right, are, are uh, metal and with a sequin hub, right? So we're gonna look at this in detail. Rita says, I turn my hose inside out before cutting so I don't get a curled edge unless I want a curled edge. Interesting, Rita, thank you. I have not figured that out yet. I'm gonna try that too. That is so interesting. Gosh, you're good. That's a, I'm gonna try that. I'll try that on the video too. Um, that's a great tip, thank you. And Judy says, oh, that misty moon and clouds, they're beautiful. They are super beautiful. Let me stretch this out. And then I want to read the rest of Linda's message because I feel like we're getting a real good head start in the pumpkin. Uh, Linda said the, the pumpkin rugs, right, that we were looking at, they will be in the December, January issue of Atha magazine. So that is something to look forward to. So if you subscribe to Atha, you're going to see these rugs again in that issue. Um, but yeah, I just wanted a better... Uh, I just wanted a better sort of close-up of this because it was an extraordinary piece. I was super ashamed of myself for, um, there were so many rugs up, you know, and I loved this one. I just didn't get a good shot of it. And you can see there's a good sort of a texture happening. There's good fiber happening um, on the top of the pumpkin. It looks like eyelashy, right? It's just absolutely beautiful piece. And we only saw a fraction of it. Pretty, huh? Real pretty. And let me switch over here. Wait a minute for the conclusion of this episode. Let's come over here. But Rita said, I mean, at first, let me, Rita says, an inside when dyed are uh, a bit lighter, so you have two values. That I did notice. I wonder if I have any 
I don't, do I? Because they're all on my they're all on my sofa. Um, because I was working them. I don't think I have any in reachable. No, none none that are reachable. Super fun though. Super. Not even of the colored ones do I have any. You know, and the colored ones are super super bright. The ones that are in the Halloween bag. Also, if if you're um, in the Facebook group or subscribe on YouTube, you'll see that yesterday I put up a bunch of things that were like surplus kits and um, sugar skull faces that were from the classes I've done recently. I always do too much because I'm so afraid. Sometimes people like fight and argue about stuff like, oh, I thought I was getting the kiss of the spider woman. And they're like, no, you ordered Lily of the Valley of the Roses. And, you know, and, and I just hate these kinds of conversations. I hate conflict. It, it sets me right off when I'm I just want to smell what smell that was. It's quite good. That's where that smell is coming from. So I always make extra because um, there is always like a, a percentage of people who don't actually take the pattern that they that they ordered, that they signed up for, which is fine because I bring three of each. So that's crazy. But I end up with a lot of extras. So I posted those in some of the extra wool, yarn, and pantyhose bags that are like bargain prices, right? I posted a video on the YouTube channel last night and people have been picking them off. So there's still some left, but many of them are gone. Um, and also in the Facebook group. So if you look at that video from yesterday and you want some of that stuff, it is ready to ship. So I'll be able to ship it on Monday morning with the Monday morning mail, but it is literally ready to ship. It's on the table. So make sure you check that out. And before we close this episode, let's just have a quick little conversation about sweaters because a lot of us has been, have been hooking with sweaters lately. Uh, it is a fun thing to do in this season. You might have found some of your sweaters that have damage or don't fit anymore, or you just, you're just done, right? You're just done with them. Um, and when that's the case, it's a lot of fun to cut up your sweaters, right? So I tip, I typically cut up my sweaters with scissors, right? I have put, I have been known to put them through the bliss cutter. It's probably not good. You know, if you put something through the bliss cutter, um, that you don't know the content of and you hear like crunching as it goes, um, hold on just a second. Let me just say I'm live. Um, that was a call from home. Hopefully everything's good, but, um, you know, wool sweat can be wool sweaters or can be any sweaters you can hook with anything but if you put something through one of your cutters that makes a crunching noise as it goes that's not good so get it right out of there because you're going to dull your blades um that's one of the reasons i often cook, uh, cut with scissors unless i'm making kits i tend for myself to cut with scissors and to just hook as i go and we've had lots of conversations about the washing of them and all of that stuff and it's all a lot of fun so I just wanted to show you, uh, I, I'm not able to take videos at Savers because there's always music playing, so that's a problem with copyright. But I just want to show you, I was over there the other day and I was just picking up some sweaters and looking at some sweaters for the prospect of um, buying them and using them. And I want to show you in my head what the criteria is for myself in case you're just kind of approaching the subject of, let me pick up some sweaters and hook with them, right? It's a great idea. First tip is always pick up the largest, check the largest section first, right? Because the sweaters are going to be the same price, but you get twice as much material if it's super large, right? So for example, this sweater is a cable sweater. I didn't pick this sweater up. I don't know if you can see, but it is cable on the front and back. Cable, I cannot hook with because of the way a machine knits the cable, right? It's machine knit. Um, it's, it's twisted, right? It's, it's not a back and forth or an up and down. Once you cut into the cable, it wants to unravel a lot more aggressively than a plain knit would. So cables are not good. Even if this is 100% wool, which I think it is, and I put it through the washing machine and it was a little bit fulled, right? Not quite felted, but a little bit fulled, I still would have a real struggle hooking with cable. So that means with this particular sweater, it was a thumbs down for me because there's not enough meat here for me to justify whatever it costs. It's just the sleeves. If I was dying for, um, if I was dying for this color, I would get it for the sleeves. And then I would probably take the front and back and turn them into a pillow back, right? You can still use it, but it's not going to be handy to hook with. Judy says, did you finish sweater weather? I don't remember seeing. No, not yet, Judy. I haven't finished sweater weather. That's one of the, I know I shouldn't move on to other projects before I finish. I was, I was just saying, I think to Kirsten uh, last night, I have to finish 
sweater weather. Um, one called Gone Batty. That was a, a Patreon pattern that was a witch on a broomstick with lots of bats behind it. Um, I, those are two that I started. And, oh, the witch, um, the little primitive witch that went with the Gauguin class. I started her, almost finished her, haven't finished her, and now I'm starting the tarot series. Um, but in my head, I just feel like when I go somewhere, I have to bring something different. Like It's just craziness. I do plan to finish all of them. I'm definitely going to finish all of them, but not yet. I saw that Melissa Gautier has been working on Sweater Weather 2 in our Facebook group, and hers is amazing. Absolutely amazing. She's gotten further than I have. I've literally hooked for about an hour so far this month, so hasn't been ideal. I will get back to it soon. I'm really looking forward to it. So for me, this was a thumbs down because there wasn't enough meat on the bone. Uh, it wasn't interesting enough. You know, with these three sweaters, and I'm going to stretch them out a little, they I, I, they were near each other, and I hung them next to each other on uh, for this photo on the rack. And what I did like about these three sweaters is can you tell in all three, I think it's least pronounced on the left in the pink one, but they have kind of that Tweedy Donegal look to them where the reason I was super interested in them was because there were flecks of other colors in them. So while they each have their sort of respective problems and properties and or, uh, they do go together as a great set because they all have flecks to them. So when you're looking for commonalities in something, right, that will make a great composition, it's interesting to think about not just trying to color plan and coordinate color, but with something like a sweater, also trying to coordinate um, like the look of the thing, the texture of the thing. That's another way that you can do matchy matches. So I think I ended up not getting these because together it was like $30 and I did have a project in mind and the pink one was not, as you saw, super useful. But now I kind of regret it because these three together would have been great for a project. Not that I cannot find flecked sweaters again, but this is just a nice trio. So sometimes looking for something like that, oh, this is the close-up that I wanted, um, is interesting, right? It just gives you uh, different ideas and certainly a different look. Rita says, some people take two, um, take two tedious for uh, men's sweaters apart and reuse the yarn. Yeah, you know, absolutely. When you, Rita's making a great point. With some sweaters, there isn't enough meat on the bone, but you can attach, and I have a video of this on the channel, you can attach, if you have a winder or, or even just your hands with a little piece of cardboard and you want to wind a ball of yarn, get down to like the bottom of the sweater. I usually start at the bottom left of the front piece. And I try to find that magic piece of yarn that is going to unravel the whole front. And sometimes it breaks a thousand times. And for me, it doesn't matter. I just keep winding even the small pieces because I know I'm going to hook with them anyway. And I often attach to a winder. So yeah, Rita's making another amazing point that if you are finding sweaters and you love the color, you love the material, but they're not great to hook with because of the way they have been knit, then unknit them, de-engineer them, and just use them as material. You could punch with them or you could hook with them. And if it's very, very thin gauge, you could double, tr tr treble up or whatever um, and, you, and just hook with them as you would hook with anything. So anything can be used, anything fiber, and beyond can be used. For me, these can't be used, right? All three of them. If I like, these are what I call Madonna sweaters because they're shaker knit. This is, this cannot, uh, it, it's not impossible, but if you were trying to hook with this, this would be extremely difficult with a lot of aggravation and a lot of loss. You would be much better off doing what Rita is suggesting. And if you loved the cut, like the one on the left, I quite like de-engineering them, right? Deconstructing them, attaching them to a swift or unraveling them. You'd get better use of the material than with sweaters that are highly textured like this. They're going to be a nightmare to hook with. So you want to avoid these unless you are planning to unravel them. This was a pretty one. I think I ended up getting this one. It's not wool. I think it was all acrylic, but I liked it because you can see it had a lot of rainbow shots going through it. And I thought, oh, that's really fun. That could be really fun in a sky or something. I can cut against, I could cut uh, not with the stripies, but against the stripies. And uh, Cindy says a good challenge project would be a rug with all recycled fiber. That would be a great challenge. That's something we should think about. That'd be fun. Um, yeah, let's think about that. That's a great idea. 
I like finding stuff like this because, you know, a lot of the door mill uh, that we see is patterned and it's, it's very stripe driven. It's very nice to cut across it so you get changes constantly. If you go with the stripes, then you've got a blue stripe and you've got a yellow stripe. If you go against the stripes, it's almost like confetti and you get hit with another color, every, not even every centimeter, every half centimeter. So sweaters like this are very fun to work with if they seem like a kind of sweater that you could cut up. This one I definitely ended up getting. And this one could be, this is an 80s, 100% synthetic sweater. Uh, first I tried to wear it, but I'm too big for this. But you see all the thready threads in it, almost like a fair aisle machine knit, and you think this is impossible, this is not gonna work. You can still hook with these kinds of sweaters, right? It's, it's different from project to project, but I just love the patterning on it. I'm gonna cut this really, really wide with my scissors, and I'm probably gonna hook this sweater into a latch hook backing once I figure out exactly what I wanna do with it because I love the patterning, I love the colors. It's possible to rug hook with it into a loose backing like linen or burlap, but I loved it. And it, it cost like nothing, right? Because it's an old sweater and it had stains, but I didn't care. I was very, very happy to find it. And I'm always looking for sweaters of you know this era, the 80s, 90s. Uh, I don't care that they're synthetic. Um, I just love the colors and it reminds me of growing up. And I know that I will use this sooner rather than later. And our last slide. Oh, okay, so here's another one that is like that. This is an all over fair aisle, but this is a um, much more traditional horizontal. I can't remember if I got this one, but this one could work great. The thing with this is it's gonna hook well. This was 100% wool. Um, it's gonna hook well. It's a very small sweater with a very open like bateau neck, which isn't ideal because you're lose. you know, if it was a turtleneck, you'd have even more material. The thing about this sweater to think about, the one on the right I'm talking about, and it goes the same for the one on the left, the Argyle. The thing with sweaters like this that are very, very colorful is if you plan to use this in strips, right, you're gonna get a very irregular color. It's not gonna have any continuity. It could be very cool for doing a background, but if you're cutting against the stripes and not with the stripes, you're gonna get like lots of gray, a little bit of black, a little bit of red, a little bit of black, a little bit of red, lots of gray, a little bit of dark gray, a little bit of blue, more gray, right? It's not gonna have a lot of continuity. It's gonna be very, very busy for a fill, any kind of a fill, um, border background included. And the same with the purple one. Purple one's a little bit different because we are talking about three colors of purple and then the white. Um, so that could be a little bit more harmonious, but both of these have very are very distinctly colorful with very high, high contrast color changes. And since that's the case, if you're thinking, oh, um, I would like gray in the background and you use the sweater on the right, you will have gray in the background, but it's gonna be very, very busy with all of these other colors jumping in constantly. So with a sweater like that, if you're thinking, well, I would like a little bit of blue, a little bit of red and a little bit of gray, you could cut a sweater like the one on the right horizontally with the striping and just use all gray for when you wanted all gray stripes and then use the other mixed ones when you wanted darker areas or more colorful areas. But sweaters like this with a lot of color changing, it's they're more difficult to use because it's not like, okay, I need more yellows, there's some yellows. It's like these are very, very, uh, have very marked patterns. And you really need to think about where you might use something like this. Kirsten says, could you over dye them to get a more harmonious set of colors? You absolutely could, but just remember with the one on the right, I'm pretty sure this was 100% wool. So if you were to over dye that, and that is a great idea. For example, if you were to over dye it uh, like in a navy or an aubergine type color, it would marry all of the colors together and it would work a lot better. That's a great solution for that. And you could do that with your normal dyes that you would use for dyeing wool, Cushing, Prochem, Dharma, you could use all of those, right, for dyeing the wool. Um, the one on the left I think was cotton, so I'm not, it won't dye as well as the wool. Many of the ones that I was holding in my hands were synthetic, and the synthetic ones won't dye with those colors, right? They won't dye with our Cushing, Dharma, and Prochem. So you might get a little change, but you're not gonna get a really pronounced change. It's gonna be a disappointing uh, dye job. But remember that RIT dye, right, humble, humble though it sounds, they do a synthetic dye and it is excellent. So if you did want to over dye sweaters, it doesn't have to be all synthetic. If it has any synthetic content, it's not going to dye well. So be looking at the tag and if it has a synthetic content and you're thinking, let's do a Kirsten 
and let's over dye this in purple. I, I would love to see all of these colors. It'll still have a little bit of yellow, a little bit of green, but it'll have a lot of purple and that'll kind of marry the whole thing together. Um, give it a good baseline, you know, then be thinking about hopping on Amazon or to your local craft store and uh, looking at the RIT synthetic dyes, right? They're different than the standard RITs. So all of those are there for you. That's all, um, that's all possible. Absolutely. Over dyeing is a fantastic idea. I'm putting my shoes back on. You know what? I have got to go. I've got to get some orders out. I've got to get some stuff done in a hurry. Um, that was a fun episode. I like doing a little, I like doing mixed nuts. That's kind of, we're all a little bit nuts, right? So that's kind of fitting, but, um, I will miss you tonight for a longer show. I'm sorry about that, but I will take pictures of interesting things that I see at the witch's ball. There's also fiber and stuff there. So it is super fun. Um, so that's at the Providence flea tonight. It's called the Providence flea. It's an indoor market. If you're anywhere in the area, I will be there shopping with my kids. It'll be fun. Um, so I will catch up with you on Monday. Um, and I'll be careful about the timing because I do want to go to the Beinecke on Monday to do a video on the tarot cards in anticipation of our design like tarot class. So that'll be a lot of fun. And we'll be back to a normal schedule for the most part next week. I'm going to have to move next week's, um, cocktail night too, uh, just because that's the night at the school that they're having the Halloween party and they're using my, uh, games that I built. Um, so they expect me to be present. Yes, thank you. Thumbs up. And and hey, look for that video, right? Um, thanks, Anne. Look for that video that I will have up. It might not be before I go out tonight and take the kids and we're off at the witches thing, but it might be after when I get to the hotel. It probably will because i got to drop in all those slides. I think you will enjoy it immensely. It's going to be a good solid hour of interesting talk in beautiful rugs that you have not seen before, right? And that's going to be called something like the design-like talk at the main uh, seacoast guild that'll be something like that will be the title so be looking out for that that'll be there for you if i find other interesting things over the weekend i'll post some more short videos in the meantime make sure that you are signed up for the tarot class make sure you're looking at the new products that are out i'm at the end of the halloween season there's a lot of halloween stuff including all that great sales stuff it is not in the ribbon candy hooking store it is in the youtube video so look at yesterday's video and you'll see that if any of it is for you you can claim it and i will get it in the mail to you and let, unless we do it in the next hour, I'll have it in the mail to you on Monday. So that'll be there for you. And it's just, it's also fun stash builder stuff at very low prices. So uh, happy weekend, everyone. And I will look forward to Great Nut Show. <laughs> Thanks, Garetti. I will look forward to more Great Nut Shows, more Lots of Everything Shows. And I will see you all in person again on Monday at noon. Happy weekend.